Hey guys, so today I'm going to do a session on how to create a solution for Helix. Uh, this is a very popular topic that everybody seems to be, whenever they see my my first tutorial where I kind of shared how you can create a Sitecore uh, implementation without using Helix, everybody thought I should create one using Helix. So that's the purpose of today's session. So why should somebody use Helix? Well, if you don't already know the answer, Sitecore has come up with a best practice or what they think uh, people should be using if they're developing Sitecore sites. And this this uh, thing is considered or called Helix. Um, so let's let's just describe what it's not. Um, it is not a guidelines on how technically to build your Sitecore sites like what tools to use, et cetera. So it's not gonna tell you that you should use Glass or, an, or some other sort of ORM. Uh, you could still use the traditional Sitecore API or, or go without having strongly typed models or anything like that. Um, it's also not going to be something that uh, tells you what serialization tool that you're gonna use, such as Unicorn or TDS. Um, it's also a little bit more broader than that. It's not gonna tell you how to set up your project structure. Um, we're gonna do it in a way today that kind of follows Habitat's methods, but you don't have to follow that. Um, we're also not gonna use Gulp, which, which uh, Habitat uses by default to kind of standardize and, and streamline some of the uh, kind of pitfalls I see in the Helix, in, in Helix uh, structure, but um, there are a lot of things that it's really trying not to tell you how to do. So uh, one big decision I had when I first started doing Helix implementations is should you build, so for each uh, layer of the Helix uh, platform or, or framework or whatever you wanna call it, um, there are these modules. So if I built a module, you can build it to be end tier architecture, you could have a a core, a data layer, a um, web layer, et cetera, a presentation layer, whatever you want to call it. Um, you could define those all inside that module. Or you, as Habitat does, it, it defines all that stuff inside one project. Now, that's all up to you. Uh, there's, there's negatives and, and uh, there's benefits and negatives to both those approaches. Um, so you, you'll have to decide those on your own. So, um, Helix is just a way or structure to the general idea of how you're building these sites, but not, not necessarily technical aspects. So the technical aspects, you'll have to decide those on your own. Um, you could follow some of the things that are done in Habitat, but as I'm about to cover in a second, um, what you see in Habitat is not always a good idea. So what is Habitat? Why well, I keep mentioning Habitat, what does that mean? Um, Habitat is a kind of a tool that just is a example of Helix's best practices. So um, although I must admit that not all of them are followed inside Habitat, but a lot of people see Habitat, they learn about Habitat and they're like, oh, okay, well, I'm gonna use this to build my, my Helix implementation sites. That I don't agree with. Um, so it's not a starter kit. It's not a starting point for you to build your Helix implementations. It's more as a, just a guide. So what you should do with Habitat is, is take things, you can take things out of that, uh, that you think makes sense. So if you're gonna use Unicorn, for example, uh, as I'll show today, I'm gonna actually use Unicorn as well for my basic implementation is you can take the, how they've done it inside uh, the Habitat framework and bring it over, bring it over into your own solution. But what you should not do is start from Habitat and start building out your sites because there's a lot of things in Habitat that you may not even understand. Uh, you may understand it, but you, you don't really see how it's gonna benefit in your own implementation. Um, first off, on the first part of that, if you are moving code or using code in your own solution, especially for an enterprise uh, application, and you don't understand why it's doing what it's doing or how it's doing things, you should not add it. It should not be in there. Um, 
you should under, fully understand everything that you're working with, especially if you're architecting a solution. Um, so use Habitat as a, a guide. Um, so like some of the things I'm gonna show today on my example solution is, is kind of the same structure that Habitat uses, um, but you don't have to do that. You, you really don't. So let's talk about what I'm building today. I'm going to set up a Visual Studio solution that's going to be based off Helix principles. Um, the goal of that is to just show what you need to do uh, to set that up. I'm going to go in a very manual process or a manual way. So meaning I'm not going to automate any of the tasks that I could do, uh, such as Habitat main, uh, has some gulp tasks that automate the publishing of projects. I'm not gonna show any of that today. I might show that here in the future and use this, this solution I set up as a uh, stepping point into more Helix-based uh, challenges or problems that I'm gonna solve while uh, having the solution. Um, I'm also gonna only show, um, I'm, I'm gonna go with eventually, uh, for now, just a unicorn, but I'm gonna uh, show eventually glass as well, but I'm not going to show that today in this course. Um, and um, I'm also going to show the Sitecore setup. Uh, so I'm going to basically set up a very ground level implementation of Helix that we can build off in future tutorials. So uh, let's talk now a little bit about um, the, the layers of Helix. So um, there are three layers that make up Helix. Uh, there is the foundation layer, the feature layer, and the project layer. And you're going to see those as I create this solution inside Visual Studio. But the foundation layer is the lowest level of the uh, of the layers. Um, as the name as the name suggests, it's the foundation for your application. Um, and to keep in mind, these layers kind of control the layers of dependency. So um, the project layer is going to depend on the feature layer, and the feature layer is going to depend on the foundation layer. Um, so uh, some things that usually um, should go in your foundation layer are things that are really not going to change all that often. If your foundation layer is constantly evolving or changing, um, your overall Helix implementation is going to be in, in trouble because there's going to be a lot of things lower down or, or higher down, however you want to see it, in your feature or project layer that are going to depend on your foundation layer. So example, the serialization um, topic I'm going to also include in today's session on how to set up Unicorn in Helix is everything is going to depend on serialization. So uh, if you start making changes to that, then you're gonna have you, you're gonna find that you're gonna run into that scenario where you have to update all your other layers. You might add some sort of new feature into the foundation, and then that's gonna require changes in your feature layer and then in your project layer. And, and you might be wondering what's the advantage of using Keylix over traditional methods? This is really where it comes down to. Uh, it, Helix is a way to reduce the amount of code change that you're going to have exponentially as you work, work on a, uh, um, an instance or a uh, uh, implementation. So typically, if you've ever worked with a Sitecore instance, um, you're, as you go on, you're slowly going to change more and more and more. And as more developers come on, you're going to end up with this uh, there's going to end up with all these kind of features or modules all over the place. They're all going to be intermingled. And as you make changes to those, there you might make a change to um, a feature. And that feature is going to affect 50 other modules on your site because they're so intertwined and their dependencies are so in intertwined that your, your one change is now going to affect 50 different other changes. So as when you first uh, planned out your instance or your implementation, it, it was pretty simple. But as it's grown and as it's added new features, it's definitely, um, it's become more cumbersome to make changes to it. So that's, the, that's where Helix comes in. 
it, it separates um, things in a way that, and, and structures things in a way that allows for less uh, interming. That's a weird word to say, but uh, less um, your 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 modules are not going to bleed into other modules as much. Um, and if you do things properly, when you go to make one change, you really only need to make one change. Like for example, you want to make a change to a blog where you know your blog is in the feature layer and it's just called blog and there's one place you're going to make that one change and it's not going to affect anything else. Um, that's assuming you use Helix properly. Uh, let's go on to the next layer. I, I basically just named it, uh, which is a feature layer. This is where, like like I said, if you have a blog, news, um, although those could bleed together, you could have some sort of article system that could make up news and blog, uh, depending on their differences. I'll go into that more in the future about how to handle those scenarios where you have features that are same and how how you can build them in one place so that you can then make um, changes to that without, even though there's variations of that overall feature, um, but that's a, that's a more complex topic in the future. Um, Things also in the feature layer, um, you know, you could have navigation, things like that. Uh, a, a kind of a big topic that comes up is when should I add something to the feature versus the foundation layer? Um, that's something I'm not really going to cover today. Um, as, as we start uh, going into the topic of how to create modules beyond this topic of today's creating a solution, I will kind of cover um, where where you need to think and how you sh should be thinking to make these decisions. Um, the last layer is the project layer. This is really, uh, let's say you're building an Acme website, acme.com. Um, so the foundation and the feature layer are kind of more high level. Uh, so your your foundation might be Bootstrap, it might be Sitecore specific features, maybe some jQuery up in there, um, things like that, and maybe even things that you've developed that are not likely to change, such as the serialization stuff. And then Acme.com would have a feature layer, which might have a blog, it might have a navigation, um, events, things like that. And then your, finally, your project layer for Acme.com will actually be something that represents its main website. Uh, it could be assets such as images, videos, uh, localized JavaScript, localized CSS. Um, to that specific project. So for example, if you're a front-end developer um, and you're in, in your foundation, you would put things that would you'd want to be um, kind of global. Uh, so if you had something where you wanted to kind of, um, kind of create a baseline for your bootstrap or whatever framework you're using, you would put that as high as you can up in the foundation. And then each layer below that would actually, um, so your feature would have specific styles that would uh, relate to the features that you're building. But then then down in your project, if, if you found that you were implementing a blog that's in the feature layer and you're implementing in your project, you would also have style changes down there as well that might affect your feature or even your foundation. Um, Lastly, uh, another thing I see popular to add in the project layer is like layouts. Um, you're not necessarily going to see renderings, but definitely layouts. If you have any broad level renderings, you might also see them in that layer as well. So that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and get started on the setup process. So today uh, we'll go ahead and, and get Sim started first, creating our Sitecore instance. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my SIM or Sitecore Instance Manager. And like I said, probably in my last tutorial on project setup, you don't have to use SIM. Um, this just makes things so much easier to set up. Um, and I think everybody should use it, but you don't have to. You can go onto Sitecore's, Sitecore's website and download the installable executable just for a specific version and just have that and run that. Or you can even just manually install it, which at some point I'll probably go over that topic at some point as well. Uh, so I'm going to do install instance. And I'm going to do 8.2, update 2, 
since that's all I currently have installed on this machine, since update 3 is technically out already, I'm going to do next. Um, actually, um, I guess I don't have it. I, I did a, a, a temp video, but just before I did this, so I'm just call it Helix example. And I am not going to select any of these options. I'm going to use the clean slate uh, tool that I have, which I'll try to provide as an ex uh, a download link on the video. Uh, this is just a, it basically removes all the example, um, example items that get created when you uh, first have a Sitecore instance. So example, uh, the home page will be there. Uh, you have example workflow that gets created, things like that. Um, so we'll just go ahead and do that. Just write down the name of the solution. So, and then I'm not going to do anything else. We could if we wanted to. Now I'm going to install. All right, it's done. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and open it in the browser. It may take a few minutes for it to respond. All right, there it is. We have, it's it's actually deleted those items using that clean state uh, zip file, but it since those exist inside the master database and hasn't been published, it still shows the home page. Uh, so if, for any of those that may have been confused by that, what, how that works exactly. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is start setting up the solution. So to do this, I'm going to put it uh, in the same place I put all my Git uh, 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 check-ins. Uh, my plan will be to actually check this in eventually, but for now I'm not going to worry too much about that. So for now I'm just going to go to New Project, and I'm going to under, underneath Install Templates, Underneath other project types, I'm going to select the Visual Studio Solutions, and I'm going to select a blank solution. And I'm going to go with a 4.6.NET version. And for this, I'm just going to call this, um, let's just call this Helix Example. Let's name the solution. And now here I am, I got my solution created. So let's start defining or creating the solution archi architecture. Um, what is really important when you're creating Helix implementation um, inside Visual Studio uh, is you're going to actually create a lot of solution folders um, to help organize your, your solution. So I'm going to go ahead and create some new folders, new solution folders. I'm going to call one configuration. We're actually not going to use this for now, but uh, if you if you ever looked at Habitat, it actually has a configuration folder, and this is where the goal would go, any node uh, packages, anything like that. Um, I'm going to do a one called foundation. This is where all the foundation level modules will go. Another one called feature, and finally another one called project. And since I, what I mentioned before is I'm going to actually create two projects overall for this, this uh, tutorial. One is going to be a website, which will sit inside the project. This will represent the, the project that we're building, um, which I will call um, I had a good name for it. I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. So let's start with the foundation. So under foundation, I'm now actually going to create another solution folder. And I'm going to call this uh, serialization. Um, at the same time, I'm actually going to go into here, into the same, um, into the actual file system. And I'm going to start creating folders here as well. Um, I'm going to create a foundation. A feature 
and a project. Now I could also create a configuration if you wanted to organize all your gulp things into that, but typically what I'll do is I'll keep this at the at, at this level. Um, another thing, the important thing to note is typically this would actually go underneath a source folder, uh, or at least that's what the um, the habitat uh, structure uses. So um, I won't do that for now, um, just because that's a little extra work and it really doesn't matter. Um, it, it matters in terms of how you set up your gulp uh, tasks to run. They will use specific paths, et cetera, to, to work. Um, but other than that, it doesn't really matter what structure you use. Um, we, I built uh, Helix module components that don't use this structure at all. I mean, it uses the feature foundation project, but the one I'm about to show you next, where I create a project, that whole structure I haven't used. So for foundation, I'm gonna go into that and I'm gonna go ahead and create another folder called serialization. And what I'm showing you is going to be the habitat way of doing things or the way it uses its folder structures, but it doesn't necessarily have to be like this, like I said. So I've created that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into serialization. I'm gonna say add new project. And I'm going to create a web application. Click here. I'm not going to create a, I'm using Visual Studio 2017. So you might see options for .NET Core. Uh, if you're not using Visual Studio 2017, it doesn't matter. 2015, 2013, all those versions should really work with setting up a Helix implementation. Just your options might be slightly different. So I'm going to create a, uh, a name, a, set up a name for this. Like I said, this is gonna be the way that Habitat works, but you could be different. So why am I calling it code? Well, it's just the organizational pattern that Habitat has. Um, typically, you could also call this um, sitecore.foundation.serialization um, as well. Um, and I, just to kind of cover quickly, this initial namespace or, or a name doesn't necessarily have to be Sitecore. Um, you could give it something specific to your organization, such as I work for Arrow, so Arrow Digital. So if if I was building something for my internal company, I would call this Arrow.Foundation.Serialization, for example. Um, if you are building an open source framework, for example, you might give that open source framework some sort of name, um, such as Unicorn. If, 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 if this was Unicorn, they might call this Unicorn.Foundation.Serialization, although I don't know how that would work with serialization since they're a serialization tool. Um, but yes, that's, that's kind of a naming convention behind it. But since I'm using or following the Habitat way, um, I am going to just call it code. And then I'm gonna to browse to that folder. So foundation serialization, select folder and click okay. And now it gives me options of things to select. I'm just gonna select an empty template and then I'm gonna select MVC and I'm not gonna add unit testing. I'm gonna show that at, in a later date on how to do unit testing with um, Helix and one without Helix. So I'll select okay. So it's going ahead and just creating a project, a web project. Um, and this is a never habitat thing, but also it's, it's important to note, um, I'm gonna create one project to store everything. Typically it's gonna be a web project because if you have presentation things, it's gonna have to be in a web project. Um, so things that I would typically, in my other example project I created, I had an example.data, an example.core, I believe, things like that. This, I'm gonna combine everything into one web project. Um, so I might have a repository in here, I might have uh, some core models, et cetera. Um, the reason for this, and this is something I've actually discussed on Slack quite a bit. Um, if, if, if you're gonna split this up into multiple projects, which you can do, there's nothing wrong with that. 
Um, but what you're going to end up with is potentially hundreds, if not maybe even a thousand projects in your one solution. That in itself could cause you uh, performance issues when loading your Visual Studio instance. Um, the second thing is it doesn't really matter um, when it comes to as long as you, since you're since you're taking all your code and putting it into one centralized location for that specific feature, you're basically doing you're, you're basically um, um, separating your code anyways or separating the concerns. So so there's really no need to um, necessarily create multiple projects. But like I said, it's all up to you in the end. I've no I I've when I had this discussion on Slack, they have definitely said that there's people who have gone out and actually done that. And that's up to you. You know, uh, there might be advantages to that. There might there's definitely some disadvantages to that. So I've called it code. What I'm now going to do, since this is a um, habitat architecture, if you watch uh, Tom Elbum's uh, videos on YouTube, they're under Master Sitecore channel. Um, he actually shows this in his fourth video on how basically doing the stuff that I'm doing now. So I'm just going to call this Sitecore.foundation.serialization. And I'm also going to copy this because I'm going to need this in a second. So now I've given it the proper name. But the reason I did that is now inside this, it's actually created under code. Now, why is that important? Um, for, for this instance, since I don't have a gulp task to set up, it doesn't really matter. But if I had gulp set up and I wanted to, say, maybe do some sort of automation where I publish all the uh, items all at once, this would be a little bit more important because I would be saying, hey, find me all the projects that are underneath the code pro the code, code photo, code folder, um, and, and do things to them. Either build them, pro publish them, whatever it may be. So um, it's up to you how you want to do this. You don't have, you, you could choose that you don't want to call it code. You could call it something else. Um, you could make your scripts a little bit more uh, fancy and just give it names, you know, Sitecore Foundation Serialization here, and then it could just find all the projects that start with this this path and and do whatever it needs to do. So that's all up to you. Um, so uh, lastly, I'm going to need to go to properties on this and just update the assembly name and default in, uh, namespace. Just so it doesn't get confused. And that's pretty much it for this. Um, I'm also going to go ahead and delete this app data folder. And we're going to update the properties on the web.config and set it to none. This, if you don't do that step, it's going to, when you do a publish, it's going to move this web.config to your Sitecore instance and it's going to um, overwrite that Sitecore. Um, config with a very basic config, which you do not want. Um, I've made that mistake a, a million times. Uh, like I said, I'm going to be eventually doing a video tutorial on how to use an auto generator like Yeoman or, or maybe potentially on uh, some other tool in the future um, where you can auto generate some of this stuff. So that way you don't have to worry about right clicking and doing this, maybe forgetting about it and then finding out that your site config is you know, very basic and it shouldn't be. Um, lastly, I'm also going to delete the global.ascx file. And uh, lastly, I'm going to just delete the app start as well. Since we're not going to have any real configs for this, um, I'm going to create a app data or app config folder. And for this, let's go ahead and go to uh, manage NuGet packages. And I'm going to browse and I'm going to actually install Unicorn here. Unicorn. And I'm going to install it right here in this project. Okay. 
And obviously, if you're building a base for TDS, this might be where you install some sort of um, TDS uh, instance, or you'd you'd probably have a serialization projects or some form of serialization or TDS config projects for every uh, module that you build. So just to clarify, if I haven't already, serialization is considered a module. That might be confusing terminology with the fact that you could have renderings which are kind of like modules, but each feature or implementation you're building for different layers is considered a module. So I've built a serialization model. Um, so I've defined that inside app config now there is actually this unicorn folder. I'm not going to do anything else other than that for now. Um, so the next thing is I'm going to create a project. And I'm just going to call this example. And then I'm going to give it a new project. And it's going to be ASP.NET Web. It's going to be using 4.6. And I'm going to browse to, actually, before I do that, I have to create those folders. Go up to Project. And now I'm going to create an example. And now I can go ahead and finish this. So project, example, example. And I'm just call this code like before. And I'm going to create empty MVC. And like before, I'm going to rename this sitecore.project.example. I've got to copy that, just copy. And I'm going to do properties. Save that. So, and now I'll just go ahead and delete all this stuff I don't need anymore. Just like that. So now we have this stuff. I'm going to go ahead and create an app config folder. Create an include folder. So now I'm going to create some uh, app config settings here. So I'm actually gonna, just going to give this the name of, uh, since it's a project, I'm going to just call it zzz.project. Uh, what's the reason for the zzz? Well, I want to make sure that the project loads last. So um, the, whatever settings I set inside the project layer will uh, could affect foundation or feature level uh, items. So to, in order to help with this, I actually prefix it with ZZZ. That's just telling it based off a typical site core patching logic. This will actually tell it that this stuff comes last. Um, lastly, um, I'm going to go ahead and create some new configs in here. And I'm going to call it sitecore.project.example.config. And you can always use this ZZZ pattern. If you need to have something inherit over something, um, you can always add another Z to something just so it makes sure the pull in that, that specific thing over another thing. So um, just something to keep in mind. Not even in a, a Helix implementation, this would work in anything. So I'm just going to create a serialization uh, config in addition to the, the existing overall module config. So inside the serialization, I'm going to start defining 
I'm going to manually type this out, but um, configuration, uh, XML, and this, patch, HTTP, um, Sitecore, Unicorn, configurations, configuration name. So I would call this uh, project dot uh, example description is, and this is a unicorn thing. So uh, if you're not sure what I'm doing, just uh, research unicorn a little bit, or if you look at the habitat solution, you'll see that it's also doing a lot of this um, example project. Dependencies. So this tells it what things this uh, configuration depends on first. Um, so I'm just going to say foundation dot serialization, uh, which I'll show in a second. And I'm going to patch it after. that and then target data store physical root path source folder um, I'm not gonna give this a source folder for now um, I'm just gonna give it a a physical path. Um, so the Habitat project, they actually put um, things in a, actually create a kind of a, a config um, temp uh, token, but I'm not going to go that far. So um, As you end up with more and more of these, you might, it really does make sense to start kind of finding ways to um, streamlining this. So you only have to make one change. If, if you move this location, you wouldn't want to go back and, and have to make those changes to every single project just because you've changed the location, especially if you're working with a mul multiple uh, di different developers. So you might find that using a lot of the things from Habitat just for the, uh, a solution architecture and how to set things up, it might make a lot of sense. Uh, Rainbow is a different type of serialization uh, that Unicorn uses. Uh, so the traditional one is just a, a file that has, like the Sitecore serialization by default is a very basic file. Whereas this is a little bit different, so I believe Rainbow is an open source project made by somebody else other than Cam Figgy who built um, Unicorn.
So we'll just project that example dot templates. So I'm just going to define one of these uh, real quick. So this is actually what's going to get serialized and tracked via source control. So. Um, and I'm not going to define a role data store or any role predicates at this time. So that's pretty much it. Um, there's some errors here, but uh, shouldn't be any issues. Let's just complain about these attributes. All right, so we'll go ahead and save. So the next part is just getting this stuff polished. Um, so underneath properties is usually your publishing targets. I'm going to manually set these up. Um, you could copy and paste them, but uh, once you have them. So I'm just going to create a new custom profile. I'm using Visual Studio 2017, so this is a little different. I'm going to set IIS FTP, like publish. And I'm going to select a file system. And then I'm just going to publish this to that Sitecore instance that I set up. So all my Sitecore instances are under Sitecore. And then I'm going to set up Helix example website. Just save to the website folder. Um, you could give this a more, um, well, you kind of have to. Um, there's a way you can set this up so that you can have your publishing profiles, but then they all use one path from one location. So if you look at Habitat there again, that's one thing it does really well. And I, I actually think it's a good idea to take some of those um, methods that it uses, which I hope to show you some of that uh, in the future. I'm just going to debug this and click Save. And it's actually going to trigger that build right then and there. And it's one of the things I don't like about Visual Studio 2017. Is what if I just wanted to create one without publishing? I haven't figured out a way to do that yet. So it's published all that stuff out. And now I'm going to do the same with the Unicorn project. Um, but before I do that, I'm actually going to create a, I'm going to copy this and I'm going to move this up. So I'm actually going to go ahead and create a new folder called z.foundation, uh, meaning it's the top level. And then I'm just going to create a new uh, web config called sitecore.foundation.serialization.config. And this is where I will define, actually I was meant to copy that. Uh, let's just copy the, uh, the internals of it. Copy. So I'm just going to call this, since it's depending on this, and this is actually the file that you're depending from, I'll just call this foundation.serialization. And it's going to not have any dependencies or patches.
since it's going to be the, the first one in there. So, um, and this, this path is also going to change. Like I said, it'd be great if, uh, if there was some way to, uh, standardize this a little bit, but a little different, but because the name is going to be serialization, serialization, it's a little odd, but not a big deal. Not sure why I'm getting all these errors. Those errors are just not sure why it's thrown all those errors, but anyways. Um, so um, let's just create a. This is where I'll define kind of high level elements. So I'm just going to call this foundation dot serialization. Dot templates dot features feature and this is just going to be templates dot feature and then I'll do another one include names foundation dot serialization dot templates dot foundation database master so core templates foundation. Foundation dot serialization of templates dot project database master. So it's just going to define your basis of everything that you're going to define. So I really would add actually a layout in here and also a renderings that would define these base folders for where everything else is going to sit. But I'm not going to do that for now. Um, this is something that you should probably define. Uh, everything that's going to make up your core structure uh, should be defined in here. So. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and just create a publishing profile for this. So we're going to trigger a publish. And it's going to be a file system. Git. Alex example. And feature. Wait, no, that's wrong. Uh, sorry. Uh, Sitecore. It looks example website. Next and debug and save. And that will trigger that publish as well. Now make sure at this point when you you've triggering your publishes that you've actually set this will config to not fully published or you're going to be in trouble. So now if we go back to Helix example, we refresh. Nothing but that should have happened because we haven't really published a whole lot except for some configs and maybe some DLLs uh, for the uh, uh, unicorn setup and the basis of this setup. Uh, let me go back to here. That's not supposed to happen. Um, all right, looks like one of the things I forgot to do was um, I need to not give this such a, like I created a file, but I didn't actually define anything in it. So for now, I'm just going to exclude from the project. And I'm going to go back to um, here and delete it. I also noticed a few other things were a little messed up. Um, I gave some 
proper improper naming to some things. Um, so one of the things I saw named improperly was underneath here app config this is called foundation because it's trying to say I need a vacation um, but it should be foundation um, and I will go in here and I will also have to delete that. Delete. Um, and I know this is ZZZ was here. This is just something installed by default. So um, I'll click on here and just do a publish real quick. So I can misspelled something as well. Rainbow. So I'll publish that. Probably means this also got messed up. Usually don't spell this bad, but it is a weekend, so. So it's published everything. Let's do a refresh. And there we go. Uh, so it's now working. We're not having any issues. So the next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and start creating some, some cycle items, uh, the ones that's expecting the track. So I will just create a new tab because I might need to use this other tab in the future for something um, for the next part of this session. Um, so I'll go in here and I will log into my instance since this is a fresh instance I haven't changed the password yet. The password is admin B. It's now logged me in. I'm just going to now go in the content editor and I'm going to start creating some some site core items for some of the folders that I was creating before. So as you remember, I defined in the main serialization project, I defined some folders that it would track. So I will create a new template folder called foundation. Another one called feature. And another one called project. And this will be where all those things go. Um, lastly, I will create another one called example inside of the project. So um, that will also be tracked. So right now, out of the box, you're actually not tracking everything uh, within Unicorn. To get to kind of initialize Unicorn, you actually have to tell it to start using those configurations. So to do that, if you go back to this window, we can actually go to Unicorn dot ASPX and since I'm logged in it will just uh, show me the configurations I defined so these are pulling from uh, those configs I created so foundation dot serialization is the main one that defines those basic folders uh, project foundation feature and it could uh, technically define some other folders um, and then lastly um, there's the project example, which is basically pulling uh, this this project, which I defined, so or that folder. So, and it's saying it depends on this uh, as well. So, so let's do a uh, let's select these options and say sync selected. And what it will do is load this pretty fancy little thing. And it's basically said it's sync these these items. It's pretty quick. That's actually quicker than I remember. Um, and it's done. So so let's return to the control panel. And now another way to know that it's been synced is if we go to the um, the project and we go to let's say example. 
inside the serialization, we, we should now see serialized items. So we have the example item. Um, if we go up to the foundation, we can go to the serialization, and then inside the serialization item, we actually have all these uh, items now. So pretty cool. Um, let's um, there's there's really not much more to do. Uh, and now if we open up the example item and we select content, this actually says this item is controlled by unicorn. Change to this item will be overrun to disk as part of the foundation serialization configuration so that they can be shared with others. So basically it's just adding a little um, uh, icon and status saying that this item is controlled and synced via source control, which is actually a pretty cool feature. I wish TDS showed that. Um, and, and I will also note that changes you make here will actually happen live. So you don't have to now worry about um, getting these items back into source control. They'll just, like with TDS, you have to right click and say sync with Sitecore. These items will actually automatically sync back to the, the YML uh, files. So I pretty much think we are about complete with this tutorial. Um, we have some items added. Um, there's a lot of ways to kind of take this a little bit further now. Um, you have a basic setup. Um, you have a simple project that you can start adding things to. Um, what I'm going to do before my next tutorial on this on Helix is I'm going to build out my um, my basic foundation uh, serialization project a little bit further to sync a few more items. Um, typically what you'd want to do is actually in your layout, you'd also want your renderings to kind of follow this, this feature foundation project structure. And you might even want it even in other areas like in your content or in your layout. So um, you're really going to want to kind of have this everywhere um, so that you can organize, organize your stuff. Um, also, in your base, you might want to define um, some sort of basic structure for creating um, your your implementation. Also, in my next session, I'm going to create a base. I'm going to take that example project and take it a, little, a few steps further, um, such as defining that example project so it can so you can load up an example website. Um, I'm also going to um, you know maybe start creating a module. Uh, based off maybe a blog or something like that in Helix that we can we can use and, and implement and also show some other uh, best practices as well. So um, if you have any questions about Helix or Habitat or anything like that related to Sitecore, uh, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, if you find that you've gotten lost and you just can't figure out something, just like I said, reach out to me, ask me questions, or go on to the Stack Exchange and also ask questions on there, and uh, and you know start building some Helix applications. Either uh, one of the things I do a lot in my personal time is build modules, and I think it's best to build these if you're going to build something that's going to go on the marketplace. I think right now, really, it makes sense to use Helix to do that. Um, so keep that in mind. And yeah, that's it.